Well, good morning. Thursday again. Cornishman Day. Didn't much in their day. Not at all, really. But there we are. Hope everybody's all right. I mean, it's some gone colder today. We've had a bit of sleet early this morning, I think. And a friend of ours from Manchester just said they've had a lot of snow. So roll on summer. That's all I can say. Well, perhaps we had that last week. I don't know. Um, but anyway, hope everybody's all right. That's the most important. Now, for those in um, anybody that hail old Cornwall Society, we've been saying that because from we finish next month. It is tomorrow evening, the first of April, our meeting, and then we have one more in May. But it's so important next year or from October onwards because it's going to be our centenary. So if our, any of our members want to pay up for next year, I mean, I know it sounds a long way off, but it would make it easier for the people in the door um, with the same price as normal. Nothing's going to change. Eight pound for the year. So um, and we've got a lot of interesting talks and a great big celebration um, early part of next year. So it's going to be a, going to be a wonderful time for anybody that wants to join Hale or Cornwall Society. So come along and join up. That's all I can say. Now, anyhow, I'm going to do a Liz Armin here today. Sarah Ann goes abroad, goes abroad. Open you as well as we are, apart from me having the flu and Alfred a bit bronical, we ain't too bad. And even my poor old hip is improving. As you know, it's been our golden wedding. Yes, Alfred and me managed to put up with one another for 50 years. Took some doing. James and Ethel came over and said, oh, we thought we had to have a celebration. More like an armistice, Alfred said. And have a trip away. I said, all right, we'll have a mystery trip up to Newquay with Dutchy Tours. No, says James, go overseas. What do you mean, replied Alfred. Have a day trip to Silly on the Salonian. And they took out this book with Saga wrote on it. This air, says James, it's full of trips to foreign parts. And all the family have chipped in and booked all the day for you two in Italy. For once we were speechless. I ain't going to no airplane, said Alfred. If we were meant to fly, we would have had wings. They had no argument at all, says James. You've been fishing all your life and you're a handsome swimmer. So if you meant to go into sea, you would have had fins. So there we was landed. The first thing we had to do was get passports. That was some rigmarole, I tell you. First, we had to go to the station and go in this booth and have our little small, small photos took. We had some trouble with that. You had to put money in, then you sit back and the pictures are took automatically. The first lot was ruined because I forgot to take my hat off. And by the time I got the pins out, out of it, it was flash, flash, flash. My money was gone. Alfred was no better. He bent down to pick up something off the floor. And all we got was pictures of the curtains. We ended up with one of Alfred looking like a criminal and two of me looking like as I'd never seen a happy day. From there, we went on to the post office. We were so pleased to see Susie Diebel's boy was in there, Penzance working that week. He's usually over in Newland, so we waited for him. First, he fixed the photos onto a card. Then we had a bit of question to answer. You wouldn't believe all the things you had to tell him. There's some nosy. After we told him our family history, he said, can I see your official identification, please? What do you mean, identification? I said, you know who we are. You would pay our pension over Newland every week. You are supposed to have documents to say that who you are, he, he said. Alfred looked in his pocket and found this prescription card from a doctor's surgery. But all I could find was an envelope with my name and address on it. There you are, son, I said. The name that is wrote there is mine. I don't know what more identification you need. At any rate, he had a word with the boss and saying that there was a get queue out past the post office doors to let us have our passports. I waste a time and money, if you ask me. But when we got to Italy, they already looked at them. It could have been King Kong on them. Well, they all come off to see us off, and when we were on the train on our own, we felt some worried. We even thought of getting off at Plymouth and spending the fortnight there pretending we'd been to Italy. When we got to Paddington, we had to stand under a sign that said Saga Pickup Point, and sure enough, a coach come along with some nice young woman in charge. I think she was called a courier, though I thought this was something to do with horses, but Alfred reckoned she might be Indi might do Indian cooking as a hobby. In no time... Oh, we was hurtling through London on our way to the airport. When we got there, my blood ran cold. The plane was delayed for engine trouble, and our seats were numbers 12 and 13. Now, I didn't find flying was so bad, not after you got used to your stomach going up in, up in your throat, and the young woman tending us couldn't have been nicer. They brought round a little plastic tray with bits and pieces of food on them. You better eat, said Alfred, because all you'll have to eat in the next fortnight is spaghetti in Italy. 
I'm told they eat spaghetti in their even put spaghetti in their pastas. Now the first place in Italy they took us to was Venice. Look as if they had a lot of rain here, said Alfred, in his opinion. I reckon they got a job to keep the dump out. My handsome, I'd never seen nothing like it in my life. They get palaces and churches and everywhere these dear little bridges, just like the Cornetto ice cream advert on the TV. Then we went to Rome. This is where they throw the Christians to the lions, commented Alfred. But oh, the things we saw there. Beautiful places that you could only see the likes on our calendars and Christmas cards. Fountains, pan, paintings, statues. I've never seen so many naked men and women and all in marble. You don't know where to put your eyes. We went to this a place called Pisa. Alfred didn't like they maintained the buildings very well. They all looked a bit lopsided. We ended up in Sorrento, just like the song. We had a day trip over to Capri and Alfred got real carried away and started singing Twas on the Isle of Capri that I met her. It wasn't an old wheelie. It was by the bandstand on Presents Prom. But the thought was there. He even thought we might come back on our for our diamond wedding. On the way back from Capri, a saucy emperor boatman tried to pinch my behind. Sex mad, they Italians, you know. I think it must have been all hot weather, but I reckon he'd come off worse, though, because I had my best corset on and nothing will penetrate that. We never had no trouble with the language, especially Alfred. He would say grazie like a, like, like a native. I was so proud of him. You could tell he's a man of the world. We were a bit puzzled at first when they kept saying, pray go. When he said Kratzy, we thought, pray go where? And Alfred reckoned pray go meant the same as Sam to we, that we to say. So we said pray go too. You would have thought we were Italians. Well, my dears, I must thank you for giving us a wonderful trip. My nosy neighbour can't brag about her day trip to France on the ferry no more. Not in front of me. Next week, I'm going to bright hour up chapel to tell them all about our travels. I can see I'm going to be a celebrity. Uncle Alfred to, to send his love and to say grazie and oh so Maria bel notte. We can't wait to show you our souvenirs, my handsome. Take care. Have a nice weekend.